Congratulations, you've made it to week 10 of the small group study, 100 and 100. Uh, and what an awesome way to conclude our study then with Thanksgiving. I really can't think of a better day to kind of end this with than with Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving Sunday coming up because we get to reflect and give thanks on all that God has done over the last 100 days. Uh, we can give thanks for the, the many stories that, that we have told our friends and family members and neighbors about what God has done, the stories we've told one another. Uh, several of you, you have, you've shared your story more than any other time maybe in your life, and many have seen God touch the people that you've told your story to. Well, tonight we're going to study uh, Psalms 107. Let me read the, the opening verses of that. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those He redeemed from the hand of the foe, those that He gathered from the north and the south, from many lands from the east and the west. I love that. Isn't that perfect scripture for this week? Like, give thanks to the Lord, and the way you give thanks is let those He's redeemed tell their story. So it's encouraging us that the way to give thanks to Him is obviously to tell Him and to give thanks to Him, to say thank you, but there's an action to giving thanks, and that action, the psalmist says, is to tell your story. And then he gives like examples of the kind of stories we could tell, and um, on your outline on your study sheet, you can see that of, you know, it's a command to give thanks by telling our story in Psalm 107. And the kind of stories he suggests are stories of being lost yet found by the Lord. Stories of being lost yet found by the Lord. So tell those stories. Tell the story of how you used to be lost, but now you've been found in verses 4 through 9. Stories of being captive to sin yet being delivered by the Lord, verses 10 through 16. So stories of being captive to sin yet delivered by the Lord. Several of our stories aren't just being lost and found, but several of us like, man, I used to wrestle with this sin and yet God has delivered me. I was captive, but he set me free. He says, give thanks to the Lord by sharing stories of being sick yet healed, verses 17 through 22. So stories of being sick yet healed. So tell people about how God's healed you, maybe from a mental disease, maybe from a physical disease, an emotional issue that God has delivered you from. He's healed you. Tell those stories. You're not only going to encourage other people or maybe even lead other people to Jesus or to give praise to Jesus, but by telling your story of how you got healed, you're giving thanks to the Lord for what He's done. And finally, the psalmist says, tell stories of being in storms yet rescued. Being in storms yet rescued. Find that in verses 23 through 32. There's people watching this video right now. You were in a financial storm and the Lord delivered you miraculously. Uh, others, it was a, a storm of, of indecision. Like you had many decisions to make and you couldn't figure out what to do and you went to the Lord and the Lord delivered you from indecision and gave you a clear word on what direction to go in life. You've been delivered of relational storms. Um, tell those stories. You'll not only help others see Jesus when you tell the story, you'll be giving thanks to Jesus as you tell those stories. So what do we do next? Now that this 100 and 100 is over, or at least this stage is, we still have Advent to go, but what do you do now that this study is coming to a close? Well, what, uh, what uh, the psalmist says near the end of that psalm, he says, the wise will observe how the Lord works in their stories. The wise will observe how the Lord works in their stories. And the wisdom, he says, as we observe our stories is, we see how the Lord brings low the proud. So we see times in our life as, we're, as we reflect on our own story, we go, yeah, I thought I could do it on my own, but the Lord humbled me. He brought me low. But there's other parts of our stories that we see, man, he brought high the humble. That there's times we can see as we reflect on our stories like, man, I was pretty low. Things were pretty bad. And yet God intervened and raised me up. And so the psalmist says the wise will pay attention to that, to how the Lord works. It says the wise will see the Lord's covenantal love in their stories. That as we reflect on our stories, that we tell our stories, the, he says the wise, they're going to go, wow, the Lord loves me no matter what. 
No matter if I was proud and he brought me low or I was low and he brought me high, doesn't matter. He loves me no matter what. He's got a covenant of love towards me. And he says, we will continue to give thanks by telling our stories. So that's how we wrap up this section of 100 100 is we just reflect on, on how the Lord, uh, when we thought we could do it on our own, he humbles us so we realize we need him. And when we've been rock bottom, he's raised us up. And the wise will just keep telling those stories, reflecting on those stories, and reminding themselves of the Lord's love. Well, I want to I want to end tonight with a uh, and, and end this part of our our study and our series by sharing an email um, uh, from a young woman in our congregation who uh, I met a few years ago um, at Tim Hortons, and uh, the Lord just had me go over and pray with her and her mom, and it it just started a a um, uh, really a healing journey in her life where uh, she began to come to church and make friends and God's done some transformation in her life. But listen to this story. It says She says, we are continuing to heal. This time with God is in charge. And uh, what she meant there was she had just reflected in this email how the Lord was healing her marriage. And she says, you know what? We're continuing to heal, but this time God's in charge of our healing. She said, however, we all start off in our lives lived well before marriage. In other words, we all have stuff we bring into our marriage. We often bring those core beliefs of the person we think we are to that marriage. Many of us already have been from shattered, broken families and shattered promises. And sadly, we come from having very little of God in our life. That's the girl who now is being redeemed by faith and obedience. The little girl that never fit in and hardened the core belief of herself to the understanding that rejection and abandonment were all her fault, and she just wasn't worthy of love. And she goes, sadly, I even extended this to God as well. She said, I had little Sunday school exposure, though I don't remember much of it. Then at 13, I attended a very large church, and for the first time, I heard about the love of Jesus and how he accepted everyone. Oh, how I wanted that to be loved. So I bravely made the long walk to the front and prayed a prayer with a man there. My pain continued after that, so I was confused. A few Sunday services later, I was back up front because I needed Jesus. I again prayed the prayer, but again, the pain and the sadness and confusion stayed. So this cycle of altar calls continued. I was just determined to get it right, so I kept going forward. Finally, the man one Sunday up front pulled me aside and said, he didn't need to pray the prayer, and I didn't either. He said, you don't need to keep coming up. Jesus heard you the first time. What I understood as a teenager right then was that Jesus didn't want me either. I went home, and I never again went forward on an altar call to find Jesus. I accepted him in the fact that I knew that he was real, but I understood that he didn't accept me. From that point on, I lived a very lost life of pain and sin, that fed my rejection and my beliefs about me being abandoned and rejected. But a little over two years ago, just one of the pastors of the vineyard showed up at my table at Tim Hortons and asked to pray with me. By this time, I had forgotten that 13-year-old girl, and I had learned to staple a little Jesus on the side of my pain to get through. I said to to that man that day, well, my, my husband needs to get around some godly guys. But what I didn't know is I needed Jesus. I needed healing. I needed true, no matter what happens, faith. I need to rest and love in my father's arms. She goes on to say how she was finding that the next day as she was baptized and since I received this email, she's gone on and has continued to walk with the Lord and grow. And now, she's telling her story to other people, and she's watching people around her get healed. I wanted to read that email because I think it encapsulates what we've been talking about. The need for us to tell our stories, to go up to people and invite them in. She, she had that happen but also how God rewrites our past. And Jesus has certainly done that for this woman. How she, he's rewritten her, her present, her future, and he's given her a purpose to tell other people about him. And now 
it's not that Jesus has joined her story. Like she said, she thought she just needed to staple a little Jesus to her pain. No, this woman has joined Jesus' story. And she's being used by God to affect all of the people around her. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I pray as you discuss this in your group, you will give thanks to God for what he's done over the last uh, 70 days or so. And you will uh, give thanks by telling your story to other people. Telling our stories is a way of giving thanks to the Lord for what he has done.